Hey guys, and welcome to this new video. Today I want to talk again about e-paper displays. You can see a few around here. And I want to talk about and show the ATC BLE Open e-paper link firmware, which I did show in an earlier video already, but is now quite evolved over the past months and has quite a few new features as well as for color support, which is quite nice. In general, this firmware is basically a replacement for electronic shelf labels of original firmware to reuse them and being able to drive them via the open e-paper link access point or directly via Bluetooth Low Energy. And the only requirement really is to be then based on the Telling TLSR microcontroller chipset, which is quite the cheap and widely used one, as you can see with all the supported displays in the background. Let's talk about how to flash it, how to use the web tool and how to also use it via the open e-paper link access point. And yeah, let's get started. Let's start by taking a look at the web Bluetooth tool and yeah, web uploader slash firmware flasher. This one has two basic modes. Uh, which is for once this very simple overview where you can just simply connect to the e-paper display, select an image and upload this. So I have this display connected here and by default it will just print some basic text. text. And if I click on upload image, it will do it. And since this image is so small and compressed, it will not take a long time. The upload is done already and will be displayed in a moment. And while this is refreshing, let's go to the advanced view, which is here. And this one offers quite a few more settings. So you can basically set your custom image size, but this will only be supported if the display has the correct one as well, of course. But Further down, we have like really in-depth options, setting a few different displays, uploading a new firmware, which you can do for once by selecting a file or just clicking the flash latest, which will then flash the current version of ATC BLE Open ePaper link. And yeah, the refresh is now done. Other than that, we can also disable or enable the Open ePaper link part, so you can only use BLE. You can set the so-called clock mode, which will use the display basically as a clock and it will refresh every minute, but it's really not advised to do so because this will drain the battery on not quick refreshes. So I will disable it again here. You can set the advertising interval. You can yeah, set a custom Mac basically. You can reset the configuration so it will reset the MAC address, etc. You can just disable Bluetooth Low Energy, but then you are not able to connect to it via BLE, of course. You can either use it via Open ePaper link directly or need to reboot the um, display. Or you can just set it to Deep Sleep, which will basically yeah, let it be silent until you want to activate it again via either. This is quite the nice feature. If available via NFC, you will just basically hold your phone onto it and it will yeah, wake up the device again. Or you need to bridge the reset and ground pin in the back of the display, which you can see here in an example, for example. So you would bridge the NRST and green ground pin so it will wake up. Uh, here's, for example, one sleeping. But enough of rambling. The next part is the so-called hardware configuration. This is not really needed for the daily use and more likely to adapt new displays into the firmware. And there you can set the basic pin out and screen resolution and such. The next part is uh, the lookup table playground, which is used to basically create faster lookup tables to be able to refresh in yeah quicker time. And you can also use it to basically download the current lookup table out of the display, 
which it will show here then. This is also done via BLE, of course. And then the last part, which is now interesting for flashing new displays, is basically this UART flasher, where you can open the USB port. And I will go onto the hardware side in a moment. You can select the display you want to flash to, but you don't have to. You can also do this later via VLE. And you can also select the custom firmware file or just load the latest firmware and yeah, write this firmware or the firmware and the type into the display. Since uh, this is a universal firmware, each of these displays runs the same firmware and has only a configuration to set what display it has, if it has NFC, if it has LED uh, support or further. So that way only one file is needed and via the setting, a special setting area is flashed as well. And other than that, this is the basic tool and the normally daily use if you just want to upload an image would be this one where you can yeah, basically select an image. It will be dithered to the colors available and then you can upload it. And you can see this being done right now. But okay, yeah, let's continue on how to flash the displays. I have here the basic informations needed. What you really need is an USB to UART converter. And so far the best is really like a, v, a WCH340 version, which you can see here and this one really works the most reliable for me and is really yeah helping a lot in getting these flashed and other than that you need three wires which is the ground connection from the USB to UART converter which is basically marked as GND of course or ground and on the display itself you also need to connect to ground. Then you need to connect the TXD pin of the UART converter to the SWS pin on the display. This is always existing on this telling chip. So you basically have like here the display ground connection. Um, you have the TXD pin going to the SWS pin and other than that you need the DTR pin which is used to reset the display and this will help getting it out of uh, sleep mode so it will react to the SWS interaction. So you connect the DTR pin to the and reset pin again which you can see here again. And on some, one, uh, on some displays, especially on this, for example, where no battery is connected, you also want to connect the 3.3 volt rail. Also, on some USB to your converter, this uh, DTR pin is not yeah, on the outside available. And there you can just basically cut open a little bit of this yeah, heat shrink, if it's existing on yours, and directly connect to the pin itself, which you can see here, for example, where I did it and brought it out. And that way you can even use yeah, UART converters without it. And what I did further was creating this simple Pogo adapter board, which is also just basically connected to the USB to UART converter, but then fits directly over the pins. So you have ground, SWS and reset. This will be connected to the PC. And let's do that in a moment. But first, let's further look at this display here, where the unfortunate uh, situation is that the case itself is basically shut and glued. And since we know around about where the connector is, the PCB connector, we can melt with the soldering iron a hole in the back to get to this connection. And I will just quickly do this. 
right now. So I have a soldering iron here, which I will just use to melt into the back and do not uh, really connect to the wires. Let's get the swinging out of the light to hold the camera better. So what we want to do is mark on two positions where you, we want to melt and then stick the soldering iron basically inside of it. Let's get the focus better and just pull the plastic away like so. You can see the connections inside of it. Sometimes you just need to open it up further, but you can see it quite well, like so. The soldering iron can be turned off again because this is all that is needed of it. After that, we can take an X-Acto knife and cut away the excessive melted plastic, like so. And then we should be able to stick the pogo pins in the back at the right position and press it down basically. And the next part is then to connect the USB to converter or the UART converter to the PC, which I will do with this USB cable. And now one hand, but okay. Like so. And then we would go to the advanced view, scroll down to the UART flasher, click on open and select the COM port. You need to have the driver installed, of course. After that, all the um, correct buttons will be activated. And yeah, right now the firmware is not flashed. I will select the correct type, which is the 2.9 inch, um, should be this one. You need sometimes to play around a, a bit because on some displays you have like four or five different versions um, and only one works because the display on some is different inside. Then we yeah, can basically connect the Pogo adapter and click on load the ATC firmware. And it will now activate it. Uh, well, basically, I need to write it, of course. But it will activate and flash the firmware. And while that is running, I'm just holding the adapter onto it. Which is not the easiest part. But let's try to get it fully working. A live demo. The file is right now around about 120 kilobytes in size and the maximum is around about 250 kilobytes of available flash, so we are quite good. After this is done, we can yeah, remove the adapter and the display should reboot as it will directly have the correct configuration. And this is basically all that is needed from flashing. It will for once search for an open ePaper link access point, which you can see by this access point found text. And other than that, we can yet uh, we can also now um, disconnect from the current display. Enter the uh, last three bytes of the MAC address to filter for that ID and do not be um, disturbed by too many other displays. So basically you enter the bytes, you click on scanning and it will look for this new display now. And it should appear via Bluetooth Low Energy and Web Bluetooth in the browser. So we are again able to connect it. This takes quite a long time on the PC sometimes, depending on how many devices are around. But you can see it did find it now. On the smartphone, this is really like working way faster and better. And it will now connect to the display. And after it is connected, it will request from the display what display it is really. So the pixel, the resolution, and also the available colors. 
And after that, you can yeah, basically upload a new image. Or we can go back to the simple view to just have a better and simpler UI. And can yeah, we can cl click on upload, as the name would should suggest. And after that, the image is transferred. Like so. And after that, we can now also take a look at the Open ePaper link access point, which we can see here. And it's basically the old usual Open ePaper link access point. And you can already see the new display did yeah, appear here. And here we can now also just basically set our content we want to show. And it will yeah, wait for the display to look out for it. We first need to disconnect from blue to slow energy, of course. Otherwise, it will not yeah, do the open ePaper link um, connection. And you can see also this upload works quite well. And here also is now the NFC implementation running. So if we hold the smartphone onto it, with NFC enabled, we should be able to wake the display up via NFC. And this will instantaneously ask the Open ePaper link access point for new data. And you can also use this NFC wake up somewhere else, like in Home Assistant or so. And one further part is the LED integration, which I now need to see if I can even figure this out without problems and quickly enough. So we need the MAC address for it and can basically fill the MAC address and the LED pattern in the URL of the open ePaper link access point, trigger it. This um, pattern is described in the wiki of the open ePaper link access uh, GitHub repo. And you can see it's now a pending task which is this blinking command. And after 40 seconds, it will request the data again, or we can wake it up basically via NFC. Let's see if we can trigger it somehow, like so. And then you can see the LED blinking is happening. So that's it for today, and was quite the crash course on what the ATC BLE Open ePaper Link firmware can do right now. There might be more updates, or most likely will be more updates, and more display types supported. Right now you can see it's like from 1.54 inch up to 12 inch. And yeah, I'm quite happy how good it works right now. The battery consumption is really made to the lowest possible. And yeah, see you again in the next video.